Hey everybody, it's Will, and this video is going to be on how to prepare corn for multi-spore inoculation and liquid culture inoculation. We have some organic corn, we got this for not that much at a local uh, health food store, and we have about two and a half pounds. We're going to be starting about 12 jars, and I don't know if I mentioned, but it was quart size jars. So we have our corn uh, popping popcorn kernels, you want the dry popcorn kernels that you would use for popping and you just want them plain, make sure there's no butter or salt or anything like that on it. So what you're going to want to do, um, as you can see we have a flash on, it's night time, um, you're going to want to soak these overnight and then in the morning we're going to boil them for a little bit. And we'll, t we'll teach you the boiling technique. All right, so we have our corn in this pot. Make sure that you put it in a bigger pot because just like any grains, uh, it'll expand once, once it uh, absorbs the water. So fill it up. Fill it up to where it's covered because this corn's gonna absorb this water covered about a half inch. When you check on it tomorrow, the water will be absorbed a little bit. You can use tap water if you want. You can go out to the store and get some distilled water or something, or you can use spring water if you have it. But you can use tap water because um, we're gonna let it sit overnight and some of the chlorine will volatize and then we're gonna boil it so some more will volatize and then some of the other stuff will volatize and then it's gonna go in the pressure cooker and. I've done this with tap water before and mycelium doesn't seem to mind. So um, just put good intentions into the water. If you've looked into uh, Dr. Emoto's work, you, uh, you'll understand that water is uh, very sensitive to emotion and you can uh, put pure intentions into the water and it'll respond. So uh, just, just put some pure intentions into the water. Corn has soaked overnight approximately eight hours. And as you can see, it has absorbed about half inch of water. So what we're gonna do is just gonna add a little bit more water here. And we're gonna put this on the stove. There's not really a set time for how long you cook this corn. Bring it up to a boil. As soon as you see it start boiling, bring it down to simmer and stir it around with a wooden spoon or something and just check on it about every five minutes. And if you see any of the kernels split open, um, which I'll show you when, when it happens, um, that means that they've absorbed enough water. All right, so it's boiling. We're just gonna turn it down, bring it to a simmer, stir it up with our wooden spoon here, give it a nice little check. Make sure none of the kernels are cracked already. All right, we're just gonna let this simmer for about five minutes and then we're gonna check on it again. The corn has been cracked. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn. Now that the corn has been cracked, we are just gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna strain this out. This next part is critical. We've strained the water off of our corn. As you can see, it's still steaming. Do not run cold water over it to stop it from cooking. It doesn't matter. At this point, it has all the water that it needs inside of it. And the water that's steaming off of it is the water that's on the outside of the corn. You're gonna wanna let this steam off and just let it drain. Give it a couple hours to let it drain off. Um, don't get too excited to put your corn in your jars just, just yet. Um, if you put it in now, What's going to happen is you're going to end up with a pool of standing water at the bottom of your of your jars after you pressure cook them. And it'll just sit there and you just don't want standing water at the bottom of your jars. So make sure that you give this enough time to dry off on the outside. All the water that it needs is already inside of the kernels. Alright guys, so we got 12 jars here. And what we're going to be doing is putting a little hole in the top of these jars so we can put polyfill in there for air exchange. Uh, polyfill is just 100% polyester fibers. So what we're doing, we have a little drill bit here, and we're just going to go ahead and stick this right in the center of our jar. 
And we got a hammer. And we're gonna... Don't be afraid. Um, just make sure you're doing it in the box. So it has a little padding underneath of it. Um, so, yep, as soon as you get it in there, just pop it on through. And take something like a spoon or something metal and stick it in that hole and just spin it around to get the hole a little bit bigger. You want a hole that's about the size of your finger. Be careful, don't stick your finger in there because it, it is sharp on the other end. Um, you could take a sander to that if you want to be a little bit more cautious. So we're going to go ahead and put holes in all of our jars. Alright, so we have holes in all of our jars. So we're just going to take a nice ball of polyfill. Careful that you don't cut your fingers if you didn't sand off the sharp parts. Just take the polyfill and you want it to be just tight around the edges of the hole. Um, you want it to be loose otherwise so that the air can, ex can exchange through. And you don't want too much polyfill on this bottom end because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sticking our needle when we do our liquid culture or multisport in inoculations. We're going to be sticking our needle through the polyfill. It creates a clean barrier of exchange so that you can stick your needle in without having to take off the lid or anything like that and risking uh, contamination getting inside of your jar. So I, I recommend polyfill on your jars for anybody that doesn't have a sterile laboratory environment or a laminar flow hood that can uh, block can block away all of the little microorganisms or anything like that that can get into your jars. Because um, the polyfill can go through the pressure cooker, so everything will be sterile and nothing will pass through. No little uh, bacterials, bacteria or microorganisms will be able to pass through this polyfill. You can get a big bag of polyfill like this at your local craft store. Um, it's not expensive at all. I can't remember how much this was, probably no more than ten dollars, but it lasts forever. So we got all of our jars with polyfill in the lids. I'll show you. Just a little bit on the inside, a little bit on the inside. So now we're gonna fill these with corn and prepare to pressure cook them. We have our jars a quarter of the way filled with corn. One pound of corn will fill four quart jars halfway. So we like to start ours with only a quarter to uh, let allow for fast colonization and to uh, keep away any contaminants by allowing them to con colonize it fast as they can. Then we'll add on or use it to do uh, grain to grain inoculation or grain transfers. Fill your pressure cooker with water up to where the corn level is. So our water just stops right above where the corn is. So um, you're gonna wanna bring this to where it starts uh, pressure cooking and we're just gonna let this sterilize for an hour. So about 45 minutes has passed and we just turned off the heat. Um, it will maintain its pressure for about 20 minutes. So uh, there's our hour of sterilization. So we're just gonna leave this. All right, everybody. Right after this was done cooking, uh, after it was done sterilizing, uh, I had to go to work. I was there for about six hours and I came back home and it's all cool now. So what the polyfill does is it allows us to operate in an open environment. Um, 
if you were gonna have to unscrew the cap to put some spores in or anything like that, um, you're gonna have to operate in the glove box. So the polyfill um, is only gonna work the way that we're doing it with a uh, syringe, uh, liquid culture or liquid multi-spore uh, inoculation. So that's what we're gonna show you to do right now. And you're gonna want 70% isopropyl alcohol, 90% um, evaporates faster. All right. Sterilized corn jar. We have, we have a paper towel here uh, to put it on because the bottom is gonna be wet from sitting in the water. You're gonna want um, another paper towel or a cotton swab to uh, put your isopropyl alcohol on to wipe off the tip of the syringe as you inoculate. Avoid getting water on any of the tops of them so it doesn't go through the polyfill. We have our liquid cultures here. We ordered these from Sporeworks. We've been ordering all of our liquid cultures from Sporeworks. Um, they're really awesome. They sent us an extra one this time. Um, they, do a, they have a four for 60 deal. And they sent us an agaricus. It's actually known as the torque mushroom. Lentinula idotis. The shiitake. Agaricus bitorcus. Torque mushroom. Horatium arenaceus. The lion's mane mushroom. Ganoderma lucidium. Reishi linche. Chlorotis citrinopelatus. Golden oyster. The cultures come with the needles for the syringes and a couple alcohol swabs, so we're just going to use those to save on our alcohol for now. You're going to need some way to mark each one so you don't get them mixed up because mycelium pretty much looks the same. So the first one we're going to be doing is the ray sheet. So we're going to mark it. And I recommend also keeping a journal of the dates and times and all that good stuff. Just to keep track of some growth patterns and all, all that good things. Don't forget to shake. Shake this before you inject. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake that liquid culture of mycelium. That liquid culture of mycelium. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake that Horatium. Get your alcohol swab prepared. Wipe the tip of the needle that you're about to screw on and then screw it on. Pop it off and then wipe it down with a sterile alcohol swab and immediately inject it. Search around, you'll find that hole that you uh, poked, put the polyfill in, and then just make sure that it's not in the polyfill. Make sure it's just out in the open and inject one milliliter into each. doing one of each right now and once you get the liquid culture in there just give it a nice little shake then store in a nice dark room temperature area closets are good If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you need to know where to find a pressure cooker, you can usually find them at uh, garage sales, yard sales, um, maybe in your grandma's basement or your, your parents' basement. 
they're not that expensive to get one. You don't need anything too fancy. If you like the video, uh, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, please subscribe, share to your friends, share to any mushroom forums, mushroom blogs, uh, share to any mushroom clubs, anybody you know loves fungi. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, put it, uh, put, drop that below. And uh, other than that, yeah, you've tuned in to the mycosymbiote propagate and myceliate. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the Horatium.